Are coming ashore, making it look very graceful, especially Cody. <laughs> Whew, we made it, so that's where we're camping today. We have a new adventurer with us, as you've seen. Cody, say hi, Cody. Hello, <laughs> and everybody knows Ben. So, yeah, we're gonna go. Uh, I don't know, we're gonna go find your spots. Probably camp where we normally do. This is a pretty popular spot for us. We we know what's we know what to expect, so we come here quite a bit. But we're gonna set up our camps and then we're gonna zip back across and bring some wood. We decided to bring wood this time instead of cut it down out here. It's a little less on the environment anyway. So and Ben heats with wood, so he's supplying us. I sugar, so I have some wood for my sugar shack. So we should be in good shape. And Cody is making venison stew for us tonight. His nickname is Garcon. <laughs> so, alrighty, I'll get with you in a minute. Home sweet home. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna pack it down my snowshoes like I did last time. Yeah. Now I wish you would have brought the lavu. You wish you brought the lavu now? I wish because it's smaller footprint. That and it would have been like last time too. Yeah. Yeah. Cody's trying his new tent today. Oh, 
Let's check out that setup in a minute once he gets it ready. We'll probably have everything set up in the second trip done by lunchtime or so. Yeah, maybe we could. Uh, and we can fish all afternoon. Yeah. We don't have to process wood. I know. So we'll just fish all afternoon and then have a fire. And nice, work. cushy trip. I'm like this. As cushy as a winter trip. Usually when you and I go somewhere, there's always some massive storm or... I have to admit, I might have been... We just jinxed ourselves. This trip. I'm like, it'll be so easy! <laughs> and I do like... There. It should be good enough. So, now that I got everything packed down, I just got to give the snow time to kind of firm up before I pitch that lavu, put the stakes in. Otherwise, it'll just pull out, so... I don't know, about a half hour, maybe an hour. It should be crystallized and pretty firm. I can get some stakes in the ground, so. Let's go see how those guys are doing. Snow's fairly deep, a couple feet. What you got going on over here? What's your plan of attack? Regret, regret and forgetting my snowshoes. Oh yeah. It's always got to be something. There's always something. At least I remembered my pants. Yeah. Not bad. And see how Cody's doing over here. Look at that. Dinner's going to be in that tonight. A Dutch oven. Very nice. Good idea. Dig down. Yeah. Hammer them in. Hammer the stakes in. You get you getting good purchase? Yeah, they're going in pretty good. Nice. It's a lot rockier in Woodbury. It's, yeah. They're actually going in nice and easy. Oh, perfect. But and they're also they're solid. And so. they're holding. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, Cody's got a new tent. Who who makes this this tent? I am honestly not sure. You don't remember? I was looking for a four to six person hot tent. Yeah. That's what I found. Nice. Under three hundred bucks. Under three hundred bucks. So yeah, I'll get back with you guys. We'll check out our setups in a minute. seem to miss one shot and I missed the shot of me setting the lavu up but I'm sure everybody's seen people put tents up before so <laughs> sorry about that but yeah Ben's over there styling he's got his new tent all up Cody's got his up he's splitting some firewood right now as I speak I'm gonna get my sleeping bag out and get my camp set up and then I think what do you say we do some ice fishing yes yeah or should we have lunch first? Yes. Yes, yes and yes. That's what we're gonna do first. I don't know either. Trusty walking stick, which just happens to be the right size for a Polish lavu. And I have under here an emergency space blanket. It's green on one side. This is the uh, self-reliance uh, blanket. I think they call it a emergency blanket. But I use this as my ground cloth. A uh, Big Agnes Ultra Air Core inflation mat i love this thing it's insulated and it's about three inches thick or so and then of course my down bag from feathered friends and uh, a pillow and a pillowcase that my uh 
sister-in-law made me years ago. So that's kind of cool. And then over here, I've got my ammo can stove, which is pretty cool. I love this thing. It's heavy as heck to carry anywhere, but it uh, it's pretty nice. On the other side, let me see if I can bring you over. I've actually got a, come on. I've got a drawer so I can bake in it. So yeah, I'm gonna bake some Hot Pockets in the morning. So anyway, that's my setup. Got all this stuff at home, so I wouldn't have to there. Yeah, a little less on the environment. Yeah, well, I was planning on just getting all my stuff out here, and then I was like, you know, the same thought instead of going through and completely stripping the place of anything that's yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Summertime people are there quite a bit, and they have pretty good impact on that place. Yeah. You know, I've talked to the ranger there. So I just assume not do that if we don't have to. I got some pretty good sized rounds too, but my hatchet might break these up for my ax. So if you guys want to load those, then we can get out of here, head back across the pond. That should do the trick. There, load it up. Here, we got Ben, still working on his tent. He's got a one tigress iron wall with a, what do you have? What's your stove? Uh, do you remember? Wild Wild West from Lux. Yeehaw! So anyway, yeah, he's got a pretty nice setup. Get the tent going. Got the snow adapter, I like that. Golden pipe. So, yeah, that works pretty good. And then, Cody, what was the name of that tent again? Uh, under the weather. Under the weather. I like that. So, this is his setup. He decided to shovel all the way down and stake it down into the ground, which I think is a pretty good idea because now you can adjust it. But, yeah, so there's his setup. He's got a nice view out on the lake. Yeah, let's come inside. Oh yeah, look at that. Home sweet home. Plenty big enough. Plenty of, plenty of room. And he's got my old bucket stove. That'll do the job. I like how it's reflective inside, hold the heat in. Mm -hmm. Man, I bet that thing's like a It's harness. already a lot warmer in there than it is right here. I bet. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're gonna have lunch and uh, go fishing. Working a four inch hole, so I didn't bother. Well, Probably good place as any, huh? Yeah, I was thinking right down here is where I want to go. Seems spongy, but... Yeah, but well that don't really mean anything. I think it's just water. call up here in Vermont spikes in other words maggots so this is how I set it up basically I, I have a little fly that I attach part way up on a little leader I don't know if you can see that and then I have my little Haley's down there that so Haley's and then a fly and on each one I put a little spike 
just perch fishing today. Who knows, might end up with something bigger, but we did bring beef stew. Oh yeah, they're moving. They're wiggling around. All right. deep but deep enough and now we wait Sweet! We have dinner! <laughs> Good job, brother. Show it to the camera. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> hey, it's a fish. And we have a, another winner. Holy cow, we know who the fisherman is. Here comes Ben. There he is, right there. He's smart, he brought a chair. About being pulled up now. Oh, it's because there's a trout. Woo! What is that? That looks like. Is it a trout? No, that is not. That looks like a fall fish. Almost. Or is it just a sucker? looks like a fall fish. Edible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically the biggest minnow. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. What do you got now? Perch. Another perch. Okay, enough showing us up. My God. <laughs> you asked if I wanted to go fishing. I know. What you got, what you got? A perch. Well, I'll just be the cameraman today. Another little perch. Probably throw that one back. Just go easy with him. What are you gonna get this time? Another perch. Same dude. Little guy. God, what is that? Fish number eight or ten? This is my third. Oh, he got it himself. Look at you go. Look fish number go, eight. Dude. Fish. You're like, I'm getting sick. Fish number eight. <laughs> what you got? Another perch, but this one is skinny. This is probably one of those other two, just a repeat customer. So yeah, it's been a pretty good day. We uh, we caught 
I don't know, about eight or ten fish, maybe more. Have that one hole. We did great. Cody's over there right now. He's cleaning those up. Ben's still fishing. It's the most luck he's had ice fishing ever in his life, so he's been out. He didn't want to give up. But, uh, <clears throat> and my duty is to split some wood for the fire tonight. We do have fish, but not enough for all of us, so we're going to go along with uh, cooking up that beef stew. But for now, I figured I would take some of this, these pine cut offs from work, split them up really nice and small for my stove tonight, so I'll be good to go. Maybe make a few feather sticks. That way I don't have to process it when I'm in there, in my sleeping bag nice and warm. Yeah, I like to use a stick to hold these pieces. I don't catch myself in the hand. Pretty cold out. It's supposed to be in the single digits tonight. But we'll be good. We all all of us have hot tents. I got my little lavu. And I've got a 25 below sleeping bag, so that'll definitely be warm. I think we all brought a little bit of whiskey. That'll warm us up. There, that's a perfect length for my ammo can still. Pretty much split everything up. Oh, that's beautiful. That axe. This is that snow and Neely I was telling yeah, you about. That is cool. I like that they reinforced that. I did that. Oh, you did that. I made that. Yeah. Well, I like that part. I put the collar on it, but that's that Hudson Bay wow. pattern. I love that thing. That is nice. I put the hash marks on the back, you know, inch marks. Mm-hmm. That's very nice. Made in USA. Made in Maine. Made in, Verma uh, made in Maine, perfected in Vermont. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I brought it down here. I thought I could use it on this stuff, but I don't need to. Cody did it already. He did it already. I'm not complaining. We can walk around here, around here without snowshoes, too, which is kind of nice. Oh, you hadn't seen that one yet. I came with us on the Allagash. Yep. You have a bigger snow in Neely that someday you're going to decide to sell. <laughs> I'm just holding out for it. You know the one I want. I do too. know the one. Okay, so, like I mentioned, if you are a subscriber to my channel, I think I just added one today. <laughs> so I'm gonna try something kind of fun because I like to practice this stuff. So I'm gonna do a flint and steel fire. I hope I have. Maybe I won't do a flint and steel fire if I don't have. Oh, I do. Some char. So yeah, see, that's char cloth. So what that is is lamp wick, yep. basically. And I even have some. Inside of that, I also have some uh, punkwood, and punkwood is like it's it's tree decay. When a tree dies and yep. decays, before the, st the the wood inside becomes like mush, there's this sweet spot where you you pull the, the internal wood out, and it's kind of spongy. Yep. And that's yeah, that's punkwood. And what you do is you gather a bunch of that, put it in an Altoid tin, close it up, throw it in the fire. Let it sit there for as long as you enjoy the fire. In the morning, take it out, and you have charred punk wood. And that stuff will take a spark from the flint steel. That's how the old mountain men used to do it. So I've been practicing that. 
That's cool. over the last couple of years. And it's fun. It's just fun to do. It's fun to make fire the old way, you know what I mean? So. That's a really cool trick though, because I've noticed trying to light fires with just uh, flint and steel, a lot of times it's actually kind of hard to get, just your gathered tinder to it really is. take off. Yeah. So that's kind of neat. Yeah. So what else do I have in here? I also have, I have some Usnia. Some old man's beard. Old man's beard. So I'm hoping maybe I can get it to light with just that. So. Let me grab my flint and steel. My Uznia. yourself in the knuckles <laughs> mm -hmm. but so basically what will happen is when you when you hit the flint it shears off a little bit of steel a little bit of molten steel and it'll land on the char sometimes you get lucky and get it right off sometimes you don't That's cold. Hurry up. We need a fire. <laughs> the wind, probably. The wind. Oh, yeah. there we go. There we go. My fingers. I'm running out of char cloth. I'm gonna have to try I'll block again. the wind for you. I didn't want to wreck your video, but actually the wind kind of helps. Okay. If there's any moisture in this stuff, which there might still be, it'll just burn itself out, and you have to try it again. You know, patience. Usually I use cedar. Cedar works really well. Yeah, see it's kind of starting to burn itself out. Kind of like this stuff. The problem is, is like with this stuff, it's like something that you bought at the store, you know? The punk wood is something you find off the land. Right. Which is what I kind of wanted to try to learn, focus on. There we go. See, that one was really quick. Yeah. It's almost like it's burning away. It's just not catching. Oh, yeah. Like it's smoldering. You know what? Mm -hmm. What if I try it in newspaper? I was gonna do that, but I didn't want to wreck your not from the store part. <laughs> I'm just curious. I've never tried to do it in newspaper. Why wouldn't it work? See? 
take it. couple tries but you know what that's life <laughs> kind of cool huh a lot harder to do on demand than it is to just do <laughs> it is it is but that's impressive my flint's starting to wear out I've I, used I, it a, a couple times noticed it's a lot Did more c-shaped than it used to be <laughs> yeah I have to go find some more so anyway, cool. time for dinner yet? We've got the fire going. We're gonna wait until it burns down the coals for the, the final stew, but we figured we'd start browning up the meat and stuff like that. So Garcon has got his butter going and a whole bunch of venison. With minced garlic. With minced garlic. Oh my God, see? Uh oh, it fogged up. I'm 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 just camera like, fogged. I'm just thinking minced garlic. If it was you minced and I. garlic, like I okay, <laughs> we're already beyond me and all we're at is putting the ingredients in the pan. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He's gonna do a bang up job on this and hopefully I don't blow it with my bannock I'm gonna try to make later on. Oh. On it bake. goes. Bushcraft bait. Cody, I bet I'm going to move this camera up and Ben's going to be smiling. <laughs> oh man. Wish there was such a thing as smell -a vision <laughs> So what are you adding there? Adding flour. A little bit of flour. Oh my god. I push the flour out stuff. And just coat it because there's plenty of butter in that pan, right? Yeah. Take this, nope, need to stir it around, because again, you want the flour to be saturated before you add your liquid in there. You want it mixed all in with the butter, and it'll give it this pasty kind of look. Nice. You see what I'm talking about? You can tell it's got flour in it, but it's all wet. Yeah, it's definitely the broth right in there and see how it's already starting to turn milky yeah yeah are you going to add all the broth yep and when the meat's just browned it's not fully cooked because if you cook it that way it's going to be tougher in the shoe the meat's just browned we added flour and butter now we put the broth in we'll add the can of beef broth as well and then we'll throw all the vegetables in and let it simmer. And in about 45 minutes or so, we'll have a nice stew. Awesome. And then Kevin's got egg noodles. Yeah, so this is a secret blend of herbs and spices, but also there are chia seeds in here. Yeah. And then there's ground, not whole, ground flax seed in here. So it's going to add flavor for one, nutrients and stuff like that from the seeds, but then also it's going to help to thicken the stew without adding so much flour that you cut the, f the flavor of the stew. Oh, awesome. Oh, man. Oh, man, does that look good? There's uh, the broth that's been in the can. There's ice forming in it after I open it. Yeah. That's just to tell you the temperature we've been in all day. Yeah, I know. It's been single digits here, I think. When the broth flash freezes. <laughs> yeah, when the broth flash freezes. And Add your flash back. frozen beef broth. And just pour it all in, Cody. Yep. Go right for it. There it is. All right. So now, yeah. he's adding some red onion. Carrots and celery. Carrots and celery. Finely chopped. And my favorite, potato. potatoes. Which are also frosty. <laughs> oh man. I gotta keep dancing around this thing because of the smoke. 
glad we uh, have the big touch up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just mix all of this in here. Oh, man, that looks good. Oh my god. Is it done yet? <laughs> Not <laughs> even close. <laughs> well, we got 45 minutes? Probably. Time Maybe for beer. It is <laughs> 5.30 right now, Cody. So we'll just... Uh... Stir. Stirring it up? Yep. Oh my god, smell that, Ben. It's amazing! Hey, is it time for the Guinness yet? Not quite. It is. Oh man. We are, uh, you said 45 minutes. It is so 5.55 right now, so we're 25 minutes in. Okay. We have to add Guinness to at some point. That's and good. Someone's going to let me know when to do that. That's my one sole job. We are strictly waiting for the potatoes to be ready. Then so we'll put the Guinness in, let that cook in a little bit, put the egg noodles in. Three to five minutes later, we're eating soup. No nice. well, stew. Stew. Nice. I gotta make my bannock. Oh yeah. You want to start that? No, it doesn't take very long. Probably when that's getting close. Like okay. you, don't you let that set? Yeah. Don't you let it stand? Yep. So when he pulls that off and lets it stand, we'll flop that grate over, and I'll make my uh, bannock on in my frying pan, which okay. is perfect because you can't have stew without bread. I know. You know. <laughs> I know. Go it's garlic. It. It's garlic Ooh. bannock. Fancy. Should be good. The way that you cut the onions is called julienne. It's a French word. I don't know what it means. But basically, because of the way that you cut the onions, without having to cut them really small, they're still going to cook down so that they're going to be like, like a shoestring. Yeah. They're going to be like floppy, and they're still going to cook so that they're... You'll have a whole entire like round of the onion. And it's not going to overpower the bite of your stew. Yep. Gotcha. So, oh, nice. Starting. So that was point. good because I noticed you just dumped them in how I did them. Yep. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> yep. If, if you had like diced them, by the time this was done, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even know that they were in there yeah. except for the flavor. But this way, you'll at least be able to. Ooh, that's a little piece of onion, nice. even though it's actually yep. like four inches long. It'll just be, be a like a piece. little piece. Yep. Cool. Yeah, add the beer. Add the beer? Add the really? Beer. Yeah. How much? Half a can. Half a can of beer! Coming up. Oh, Guinness stew is awesome. Even better when it's venison. So how long before we add the noodles? Not long, Not huh? Not very long, I don't think. You want the other half? Yes. Nice. I was gonna ask, I was gonna ask, what are you doing with that? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this is gonna be so good. That's good. That looks so good. You know what the funny thing is? People think we're nuts for camping outside in the wintertime near a giant frozen lake. I don't eat this good at home! <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that looks good. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're going to be eating that. That's awesome. We're going to be eating that. I'm so excited. <laughs> 6 12. I got to get a shot of that up close so the audience can see that. Because that looks awesome. 6.15 and 10 seconds on the watch. Are you ready? Look at that. Oh I'm my god, that looks so good. I'm gonna cry it's not because of the smoke. There we go. Yep. Hear that? Once you hear the oil start pinging, you know it's ready. Mm -hmm. So. 
Throw that on there. I wish this was just a little more level. Really, if you keep it really thin, it's only a few minutes each side, but. And your consistency is right on, because like I say, usually when I try and do this, and I'm not a baker, <laughs> but usually when I try and do this, it's, it's still sticky. Yeah. And that means it's gonna take longer to cook all the way through. It does. You got your consistency right, so. Well, it's a pretty easy recipe and I don't mess with it too much. I just try to keep doing the same thing every time. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Look at this, look at this! Dinner is served. Hey, guess what? Does anybody like smoked cheese? Yes. Sure. I have smoked cheese in a cheese grater that we can grade cheese on top of this stuff. Okay, we'll do that. So, <laughs> garlic bannock and venison stew. Here we go. Hey, your bannock is good. First bite. Cheese? Yes, please. It's like the restaurant. Tell me when. <laughs> good? Yeah. That means a few more because you're just trying to be polite. Perfect. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Give me a couple more too. No, I thought so. Those potatoes came out amazing. The bannock is really good. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's actually fluffy like bread, not like hardtack. But it's awesome. Oh yeah. Cause this winter camping thing is just so tough. Well guys, that was a really good dinner. Thank you very much, Garcon. You yeah, did yourself. Guys that was delicious. Taking me. This is great. That was amazing. Yeah, thanks for coming along. That was amazing. Well, it is officially whiskey time. <gasps> At least for me, anyway. Yeah, right. I'm Ooh. covered. So I was just waiting. We're probably just going to hang out here by the fire, drink some whiskey, tell some stories. Bigfoot stories. And yeah, probably some Bigfoot stories. Relax. And if Bigfoot shows up, then I will certainly attempt to turn the camera back on, but... <laughs> As he drags Ben through the woods. You know what? You know... <laughs> we only have to run faster than him. <laughs> You'd be surprised! <laughs> Alrighty, guys. If I don't get with you, see you in the morning. Looking for whiskey. Knob Creek. Knob Creek? Knob Creek. Last of my Knob Creek. Oh, you just brought beer. Yeah. Oh, that fall fish? That's it, yep. Yeah, it was neat. I I didn't think we had them around here. The only one I've ever seen was in New Hampshire. Yeah, coffee in the morning. Gotta have coffee in the morning. <laughs> I didn't bring coffee because I hate instant coffee. But yeah, it's disgusting. That's why I brought the tea. You know what I do is cowboy coffee. I just grind the beans really coarse. Yeah. Throw them in the water. Mm -hmm. Let them boil. Let them sit for 10 minutes. And then if you take a little bit of cold water and add it to it, yep. it drives the grounds to the base of the pot. I didn't know that. I didn't know that trick. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And then, yeah, you just have real coffee in the morning. Pretty cold out. It's in the single digits tonight, so. I definitely want this guy running. stove going you can probably hear it got my coffee started in a couple minutes I'm gonna try baking a couple hot pockets in my little drawer and then maybe I'll attempt at getting up <laughs> getting out of this warm tent mmm coffee no reason to live like animals. Some croissant pockets in the morning, anyone? 
Can I fit them both in there? I think I can. One. Two. There. And now we wait. Pockets. Sorry, it's not an ad. There, maybe I'll set those right there near the stove just to keep them a little bit warm while I yow while I eat them. Nice. Hot pockets and coffee for breakfast. Mmm. So good. Sounds like somebody's baton in wood. Probably Ben. Wonder how those guys slept last night. Good morning. What happened? Well, my stove jack is torched. Your stove jack is torched? At least it looks good for me here. Second of all, I got holes burned in my tent everywhere. Oh. But that's because of the stove pipe thing, which you did tell me. Yeah. And those can be patched. Not a big problem. Yeah. But I do gotta, I gotta figure out what's going on with this. Uh, you know what I think it is, really? I gotta figure out a damper for this stove. Yeah. Yeah, so you can turn it up and right. down. Yeah. I heard you at about 1 o'clock this morning. Yeah. I heard bing, 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 and then I heard some moving around crunching. And I thought, is somebody outside? I oh, had to get cool. out and pee at 1. Oh, it was Ben that was yeah. out at 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Yeah, no. I I pissed in a bottle. I wasn't getting out of this tent for nothing. <laughs> I was fucking cold. I know. A pee bottle was actually a good idea when you're hot tinting. Yes. <laughs> wakey, wakey. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Looks like a pretty nice setup. Yeah. 
When you unzip that, just watch because the whole side that the stove is on. Oh, oh, come. Yep. He wanted me to unzip it because it's easier because I'm closer to the zipper. <laughs> <laughs> that was a secret. How'd you know? Because <laughs> I just went through the same it's, thing. It's a reach otherwise. It is. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my gut gets in the way. Huh. I'll tell you one thing though. It was nice waking up and having coffee. I and I've been kind of chilling for the last hour or something. Oh, at least when huh? you first said uh, uh, wake up morning, guys, I said hi, Kevin. Did you? Yeah, but I was not loud about it. No, I uh, my hot pocket oven worked. Phenomenal. You had hot pockets. Oh my god, they're like golden brown. <laughs> I, I love that little ammo can stove. I had tater tots. Did you? Uh, no, I had toast uh, pop tarts. You had a pop tart. I'm just still thinking about your oven is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had tater tots, right? <clears throat> I was wondering, like, did he do tater tots for breakfast? But that's right, you did hot pockets. Oh, yeah. yeah, I like the two by four stand for the stove. My humble abode. Yeah, I like this. I need to be. I need to get a foam pad to kneel on when I'm setting crap yeah. up. Yeah, my little kneeling pad. It's nice. Yep. Yep. You know, it's tight in there. Chicken but... wire. There it is. That's yeah. Cool. That's cool. See, it kind of the chicken wire kind of held it away. Yeah, it just keeps sleep. it far enough away. But I did learn one thing. I'm gonna try to get some more rigid stuff next time. This this is a little too, too flimsy. flimsy. Yeah, when you're trying to close the door yeah. and it's getting jostled. Right. Yeah. And I might try to work out a way I can clip it. You know? I was just thinking of how tight my tent is with all my gear in there. Mm -hmm. And then I look at yours again and they're like, oh yeah, I got lots of space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How'd you sleep? Were you warm? Yeah, I slept really well. Me too. I was amazingly warm. What? I had forgotten my water bottle outside of the tent when I fell asleep, or outside yeah. of the sleeping bag when I fell asleep, and I woke up at one to pee, so this is several hours later now, and I'm like, oh, I get back in, I put that water bottle, and that water bottle was cold, you know what I mean? So I had a cold sink in my sleeping bag with me oh, the whole time, and I just moved it around every now and then so I wasn't getting Warm too cold in one spot, and it was warm this morning, and that bag, I put a small liner a wool liner in that sleeping bag and that thing is awesome yeah i've got that 25 below feathered friends down bag oh yeah so i'm yeah you're ready to go I was without super anything super warm and then i just threw my uh my self-reliance outfitter nalgene bottle that stainless bottle on the stove this morning warmed it up melted the ice nice.